Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting. Wouldn't be an Eternal Darkness video if the sound didn't completely bug out early on. But yes, it's time for the bonus content. You may notice some new features here. Most notably, Jump to Game. This feature lets you hop to any of the chapters. Aside from the Alex intermissions, this sticks her at the entrance to Enga, with everything she needs to go into the finale. You have to, it's kind of annoying because you have to rediscover half the spells, or like some of them won't all be on the level you need them at, or... But in any case, I'm here to show off Eternal Mode, your reward for completing everything. Yeah, who cares. Do we want to set Eternal Mode? Yes! This is nice ambiance, isn't it? Oh, right, no, no magic. But we have mag- well, we- no, we can't have magic because we're- Oh, that's why, it was because I- yeah. This is eternal mode, as I've said, like, three times. Eternal mode, nothing can drop. See, we just fired a grenade! And we're fine. All stats are permanently max. Which means Point Blank Grenade Launcher! As you can imagine, this is... This is the most fun you can really have with it, aside from one other thing you can do. There's death for everyone! You had enough grenades yet?! mandatory ones, because, well, you can't drop your sanity, which is really the worst part of this mode. Hey, it's this room with guardians I avoided going out the book. Come on, open up. Yeah, for any chapter that doesn't give you ridiculous firepower... Well, we should probably turn that flashlight on so we can see things. Ooh, my God! 
a black guy in an action movie now. Yes. Hitting ship with a grenade will hurt you. As well as being a phenomenal waste of your grenades. Shoot the puzzle elements, Mike. But, yeah, this is gleeful fun for about five minutes. <laughs> there is one other amusing thing you can do in eternal mode. So we'll get to that right now. And here we are with Max! Max is going to play a rousing game of Find the Bone Thieves! And demonstrate a new way to deal with them. Come here, buddy. Yes, Max just ate a bone thief. Let's find another. Those were tasty. Oh, I guess that one was human. Alas, poor fellow. What about you, ma'am? Another delicious bone thief! Come on, boy! You almost want to hear him burp, don't you? <laughs> yes, bone thieves can't kill you in eternal mode. That's the, that's the other amusing thing. But there's still more bone thieves to eat! And you always wondered why Max was so fat, didn't you? I could have sworn she was one of them. Oh well! Now we know for sure. Let's clear out the upstairs while we're at it. We've got some pay cuts to make. And Max is hungry! Any servants in here? Tasty, delicious server? Er, yes. There's one. <laughs> Only one last room to check. Oh, aside from the servants' quarters. There might be two last rooms to check. Come on, tasty servants! Your boss hired you for a reason! In retrospect, this might have been better done in Peter's chapter where they're all over the place, but. Let's cut your arm off! Oh, good, he's one of them. Get in my belly! all changed. Cool. Status. Bone thief. Wait a minute. Oh wait, that's Max doodling in that thing. I, I never noticed that before, that he's got like crazy doodles all over the place.
Or has that just been there all along and I have never noticed it in any chapter ever? Eh well. We've got a few, we've got one last crazy thing to show you, and for that we'll need to go to Anthony's chapter. See you there! And bonus content with Anthony now! I was going to show off his little reincarnation shtick, but then I realized and noticed at this stage of his zombification, look at him, the... He shuns the light. He's holding his hand to, to block the torch's light from his face because he can't take it. I, I never noticed that before. That's pretty cool. And as for the horror... I figure this is a pretty easy way to get him killed. Let's equip a real weapon, because the torch, as cool as it is against... I, I said to, I'm out of... Yeah. Okay. Right. Getting into the kit. It's not that hard. I don't have the two-handed sword on purpose. Almost and bam. Yeah, look at that. It doesn't even matter if I don't succeed at killing this thing. It would be nice if I could, you know, demonstrate it. Yeah. Awkward posing for him right there. Yeah. And once more, we're at the tome. Here we've got the movie th viewer thing, just to kind of show you how it looks if you hadn't paid much attention. This is how we choose what version of the movie we're going to watch. There's a few things you haven't seen before here. Well, one thing and then one other thing, but yes. Firstly, what we've got way down at the bottom. I hate you, Ancients Clash videos. It's, it's three videos played in sequence, so... This is new, isn't it? The Eternal Darkness Prevails. See, Alex totally kicked Pius's butt. But what if she hadn't? What if she died during the fight battle against Pius? Well, we're going to find out. I'm gonna play them just in sequence here. I honestly don't remember how much of a change there is, so we'll find out together. Here we go! I spit at thee! The darkness shall be eternal! Fool! I spit at thee! The darkness shall be eternal! Shall be eternal. You know, I'm kind of impressed he manages to spit without lips or saliva. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much Mass Effect 3's ending. And the last thing you haven't seen 
Beyond the Veil, things aren't as they seem. The final video that plays once you've watched the credits for your third full playthrough, having dealt with all of the Ancients. What's the truth behind it all? Let's find out. And so it comes to pass. Of the three Ancients, there is nothing. Mighty Chaturga has obliterated the insanity of Zelotath. The madness of Zelotath has overcome the power of Uliath. The boundless Uliath has decimated the power of Chaturga. All at once, separate and simultaneous. For the universe is made of many time streams, many possibilities all in harmonious synchronicity. Only Mantarok remains, slowly dying. Mantarok, Keeper, Overseer, Warden of Ancients, Chaos, an entity trapped between the veils of reality and the enchanted stakes that impale its flesh. Unable to rally its guardians, it could rely only on its subtle manipulations of the Roiva's family to destroy its enemies. Knowing the nature of the Ancients, it used its pawns to play them against each other, resulting in their mutual annihilation. Now it will languish forever, festering in its tomb, plotting. All playthroughs are canon. They all happened at once. Mantarok manipulated the timeline so that Pius chose all of the Ancients to follow. They were even somewhat aware of it. Zelatath knew Mantarok was plotting something, but even she couldn't fathom what. So as they struck the death blows to each other, the timelines were reunited and they all killed themselves. Well, not themselves, they all killed each other. As to the exact motivations beyond that, was Mantrok trying to protect humanity? Or get his last bit of vengeance on those he knew would destroy him, sealing him forever? Now, since there's actually rumors that they may actually get around to making a sequel to this game, we may finally find out, but... I'm apprehensive of that just because the most of the team is gone from Silicon Knights and it seems to be almost their own version of Duke Nukem Forever, a game they've been working on so long that it might almost be better to just leave this game as it is, the unique amazing piece of gameplay that it gaming bip, 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 <coughs> the unique piece of gaming history that it is. Oh yes. As the last bit of thing to keep in mind, spell Roivus backwards, and all will be revealed. See you next game, everyone!